Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Monday, it's July 16th, this will be our chart lesson for today, and it was a really quiet day today, uh, rather low volume, just mostly sideways action. We had a trend down, but really just after the open, we had our, you know, convincing close outside, and we had two perfect measured legs down, and then we had two legs up, and then we were just in the range the rest of the day. You can see those two legs up, and then we just kind of chopped around, came back down, then bounced back up and chopped around and sold off again. But we basically closed inside the range. So just there weren't a lot of trades today, not a lot of price action. Kind of a weak day, really. We're, we're right at that 2800 mark. So keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of times we'll, actually it's right here, uh, we'll test that on both sides a few times before we actually and you know it may even sell off a few times last time we rocketed right down to 2700 when we got up here this time we're kind of hanging around so we may push on through this time but those those century marks the 100 marks 27 26 25 and on up 28 2900 those are all very emotional price levels for whatever reason people get emotional and you'll get a lot of volatility a lot of times when you get around those price level so it couldn't really sell off this time but it um, it really couldn't go higher either notice how we're we're hanging around that 2800 all day long today so we pushed above it temporarily uh, we actually pushed above it a little bit on Friday and tested it on the upper side before we pushed up early in the overnight and then all right, this would be Sunday evening and into Monday morning for the regular open. And then we just went sideways. So uh, that's pretty typical of what you'll see around that price level. But this won't take long today because there's not a lot of trades. But let's back out. We'll talk about them and we'll wrap the day up. But when we're coming, when I'm coming in or when I came in around 7, which is usually where we start the trades, we're working down here and into this. We're just just real weak here and it's tempting to go long right here because technically that's a failed second entry short but we're still right at the EMA and you got this trend line that you got to be very careful of and if you would went long there you probably would have got burned and so I don't like going short there we do have the close outside and new high so you could expect to maybe turn down right there but and that's a fairly bearish bar but that one's more neutral so you, you you know you might want to be a little aggressive since that confirms definitely confirms the trend line and everything's in place for it to go lower it's just not a great setup i'll give it green but i'm not crazy about it your lower high comes here notice how you broke higher here above that bullish bar and touch the trend line and instantly turn out that's a good sign right there you got enough room to get out and so that's where you'd want to go short you actually get a little breakout pullback short right here that you could uh, you could actually look at this. You could almost count this as a failed second entry long. And if but the problem is, and it is a little breakout pullback, so you've already pushed through the support, so you got a little more room here. So you might even consider that one, but technically the failed second entry long is right here. And you don't want to go short right into that. Because notice how you would have got stopped out. It, it went just enough to stop you out, and then it went right where you thought it was going to go. So, again, you might argue for that one to be green. But I'm not crazy about it. I think you're better off just to, uh, just to ignore that one. I'll give it a green, but I'm not crazy about it. But we push on down, and notice how we came up a little bit short right here, and then we overshot it by just about that much. You got a first entry, then you come back, you get a lower high, and a second entry short right there. I like that one. That's not a perfect bar, but you would expect this to push on down. And if you didn't take that one, you don't really get an opportunity to enter. There's, You could look at this like a failed second entry long, and it would have worked for a short, but I'm not going short right at this double bottom with three matching lows. It's just not worth the risk. So if you didn't get short here, you missed that one. 
And now you've got a close outside and, and a new low, and it looks like two legs down, although we did get a correction and another measured leg down. There's leg one, and then you can see there's leg two. We actually went a little bit further than a measured move, but that's basically your two legs down. And there's no close outside this till right here, and so there's too big a chance it pushes up higher again. So I'm not crazy about it, and uh, it does make a little higher low right here, but that's such a neutral type bar. So you might have considered that one. I'm not even going to mark it, and you definitely don't want to be going short down here right into the low after a break and two legs down. So that's a little risky, but then we shoot back up, kind of go sideways here. This this is a, I want to talk about this one because somebody asked me about this one. He, he treated this like a failed second entry, or I'm sorry, as a failed break out of this little trading range, which it is, but look where your most of your resistance and closes touches come right here, so you don't have room to get out. And notice that even if it had went to the previous high, you still would have gotten stopped out on that. So you can't go long right there. But notice what it does: it tries to go lower again, and now you get a second entry long. Notice the new high, pull back first entry, pull back second entry. So now you get a failed break lower with a second entry long and you got enough room to get out now so that makes this a much better trade and you've really got a two-legged correction as well now so now you'll probably get a measured leg up and so if you went long there you had the right idea you just were too early and there's nothing else you can do about that that's the risk you take without waiting on that lower, uh, you know, a second entry or uh, a higher low or something. Uh, and again, this does fit the failed break lower, but you just don't have enough room to really get out. And when you get this lower entry here, now you got a little more room to work with and a better chance of getting out of this. And notice it takes off this time. Plus now you've got your second entry long and you've tried to go lower once, twice, three times. So uh, you're looking at a lot better entry there now. And you get a higher low here, but it's now you've already back up to these highs. There's been some resistance across here. And at this point, I would still have this down here. So uh, you gotta be real careful getting long right there. In fact, I, I think you need to be looking for a short, if anything, because now you got two two legs up with that little two-legged correction in the middle. And once again, if you tried to be a little bit early here, trying to be smart, you probably would have got burned because it is a double top. So you could consider that a lower high, but notice we just had a break of this trend line and we don't have a new high in place yet. So there's always that chance that it makes the next second leg up. And that's what happened. And then you can't go short now because your bar is too bullish. So here comes your lower high and a big bearish bar. You might let it break lower and drop a limit order just to try to get a little better entry. But you could just go short with a stop there. Uh, there is a little double bottom. It's like a breakout pullback though. So you're good there and that's very bearish. Uh, you would have to probably ride that out a little bit before it went lower. But then you make a failed second entry long here. It doesn't trigger till it breaks below right here. So you not only get a failed second entry long, you get an additional attempt to go higher that fails. So that gives it even more credence to go short right there. And you can see how the bottom dropped out then. They trapped a bunch of people long here. People getting long. People rushing out of their shorts and getting into longs here, looking for the reversal. And they're not paying attention. And then they realize they've they're trapped on the wrong side and we're probably going lower and off it goes. So yeah, you can even read this right. Like the gentleman that asked me about this trade, he read it right. Long was the right play, but you gotta, you know, you gotta make sure that everything falls into place and you're almost always better to wait on that second entry. Uh, once you get up here to these highs and stuff, you may not get a second entry, but you want a lower high. And if you're down here, you generally want a higher low. So just keep that in mind. And another thing you might have looked at here is we had the high here, so you tested it once and then twice. So you might have looked at that like a double test. But without that new high, I'd still be leery of it. 
and you are a little bit away from the EMA too, so you could have gotten fooled here. That's just the way it goes. But uh, if you really follow the rules, you would have wanted that new high, and then you want to wait on that lower high there. And this was the trade of the day because you could have ridden this all the way back down. And you would have had a runner here too. Uh, I'm not sure I would have held a runner with this being in a trading range, but if this is, we are looking for a reversal. So that's the kind of place you might try to catch one. And those are often important. You know, those always make important lows a lot of times. And I would, I would call that an important low because look how it rocketed up. If you catch this, you catch a nice runner. Although it's not the kind that takes off for the whole day, but we never, you know, we couldn't get outside low, much lower than 2795, and we couldn't get much higher than 2802. So it just wasn't a day where you were going to get a runner because there wasn't any. And of course, the bottom falls out here, and look how far we are away from the EMA. Um, we've had a little close outside here, a move to a new low. We bounced off this low. Uh, big bear spot actually went lower and then turned and went out the upper side. So you might have just considered going long as soon as it broke higher. Uh, otherwise, you could have just put a stop there, a buy stop there. I would have preferred to see it break lower and then go up if you're putting a buy stop there above these because of those three or four matching highs. But we're still so far away from the EMA, and we have had our close and a new low. So you might risk this one. It's real close. I could make this one green just as easy, but since there weren't a lot of trades, you know, you couldn't, you know, by this point, and it's right at 2 o'clock too, so I'm not crazy about that trade, but technically by the rules, you know, it fits our criteria, and, you know, you, but again, it could have done just like this one did and pushed for that uh Retest for high or low, but technically this one's had a break and a new low. So it's a little bit different than this one, but it's still got some similar aspects to this trade over here. And notice this one, that's the first close outside. So you're looking for that new high. And then, of course, it made two legs up, which that's not uncommon at all for it to make two legs up or two legs down to a new low. And, and of course, then this one rockets down. So we're way overdue to come back to the EMA here because it's been a while, and so this is just a little better setup going long than this one is going short. Not by much, but just enough to where I felt, hey, you could make that one blue if you wanted to. Uh, but I really liked it more on the break lower than and then if it went out the other side already having your buy stop. Once I saw these other two inside bars, I mean, I'd have been so crazy about it then to mark it blue. I probably would have marked it green at that point. So just keep that in mind. But, yeah, that's that was pretty much it today. There just wasn't a lot going on. And even here, this was a second entry short. Notice And notice you're coming up and you get a close outside and move to a new high. And then when it broke lower, it was a second entry short. But that bar is too neutral, so that's why I didn't mark it. Even though it would have worked and you could have got a second entry short out of that, you should have been thinking reversal by this time because we've already had a close and two legs down. And so there's too big a chance that there may be some other trend working up here. And I didn't even look for a larger trend, but you could probably draw this line off those closes right there. And then copy it and bring it down and see what you get. And you can see it looks like there's probably a channel working up there, although you already had a close here. So it didn't really help you, but that's just something else that I wanted to talk about to show you. Because it could have come into play and it might have been the trend that just works on higher from there. So always always draw your lines and see what you get. Just like here, you do have a good trend line. But it already gets a break, but it still moves down all the way down and tests the low. And at this point, the range, you need to let the range probably take precedence. So the fact that we had a close outside and two bounces off of this, these lows of the range, then you probably take that. So uh, hopefully that uh, makes sense to you. But anyway, that's about it for today. There's not much else you can say about it. A really slow low volatility day and just not a lot going on but um, 
It could be this way through the end of July and into August, but it should start picking up. Usually the market will start picking up again in the fall. And we did have an unusually volatile spring. You know, March and, or April and May were really volatile. And it might have even went into June, but from about mid-June on, it's just, you know, we've had some good trading days, but it, it's been a typical summer doldrums where you just don't have a lot going on. So everybody's taking vacation and um, doing things with their kids and family while they're out of school, and it's just a slower time. But usually when the fall comes in, it cranks back up. So hopefully we'll get that this year and some good movement. But anyway, I'm done for today. Not much else I can say about it. We'll wrap it up and be back to do it again tomorrow. But I'm done. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.